Hello and welcome to the Branton podcast series. Uh, today we are going to be looking at uh, productivity and throughput in the converting department, uh, very specifically looking at folder gluers. Um, Dominic, thank you for joining me today. Um, CEO and founder of Impact, uh, based in Canada. Um, Dominic, obviously the industry uh, is facing a lot of issues with um, shortage of uh, skilled labor. Uh, I think that's true to say uh, the same in, in North America as well as Europe. Um, when we start looking at the converting department, um, obviously when we, we're looking at uh, you know, handling of die cut pieces, it's a very standard uniform uh, item. So it doesn't seem to cause too, too many problems uh, with, with handling. But as soon as we start talking about a three-dimensional folded carton, um, whether it's micro flute, lithe laminated carton board, coming off the back of a gluer, um, it seems to be that it causes an awful lot of problems. Um, Dominic, tell us a little bit about um, the background to Impact and how you've come up with some of the solutions that are changing the, uh, the state of the market. Well, uh, thank you for having me, uh, Dan. And uh, of course, uh, we celebrate our 20th anniversary. So I was 20 years younger than I am now. I was a, an internship. I was doing an internship uh, uh, during my engineering degree in Montreal here. And I used to work for a, a company named Cascade. And uh, we were a uh, box manufacturer. And this is the time where around 98, 97, where we have the back fold system with the new motors and a lot of uh, increasing in the speed and in the volume they were coming out of the photo gluers and we had some issues with the employees gathering those boxes and try to pack at high speed. So this is where I start to be involved in the packing system. Uh, this is where I start thinking. I started designing some machines at home. Uh, and after my internship, I start to uh, let's say collaborate with the uh, Cascade and uh, I, um, um, in order to design new prototype. And uh, well, after the university, I decided to start uh, the company based on the needs on the market for packing, especially for the ergonomic size also. So not only focus on fully automated machine, but also solution for the ergonomy in order to, to be able to, to, to to follow the speeds of the of the, those new kind of folder gluers. Yeah, because it, it, it's uh, quite interesting because uh, you look at the um, you know the production speeds that the latest generation of folder gluers can run at, uh, and obviously uh, you know they're producing tens of thousands of pieces uh, per hour, um, and it's not really just a case of putting more people behind, is it? Absolutely not, because uh, first of all, you cannot have people, too many people working after a folder gluers. Eh? Um, sometimes we just run some tests in order to see what is the maximum speed of a folder gluer in order to find the right packers. And uh, it's not easy to put four or five people working together and try to run as fast as the folder gluer can. So yeah, it's more a matter of um, having the technology, having the machine to help the people to um, let's say work more ergonomically but also be able to afford the speed of the folder gluer so and at the end of the day we always say that um, what our customers are selling is good quality boxes packed so it's not just a matter of speed it's a matter of so also of um of uh, quality so you don't want to pack high speed bad boxes because you lose money at high speed. <laughs> so at the end, um, we want to make sure that uh, the box are fully um, okay to be packed and to be shipped to the end user. And this way, it's not always about fully uh, automated solution that are always the best solution. It's also a matter of a good compromise between automation and quality. So sometimes it is better to put, to, to let one people working there and to give this, this operator the, the tools in order to have the, the quality control 
and also the highest speed. And at the end of the day, um, you will have the maximum of good box packed and sold to the to the end user. So, so um, you know, when we're looking at uh, you know the decision process for for actually buying a new bluer. Um, there's quite a lot that needs to be thought about because uh, obviously we're looking at uh, quality assurance systems as well. Um, and obviously there's all sorts of uh, manufacturers out there, Balmer, uh, Valco, uh, Leary, et cetera, uh, Nordson. Uh, tell us about some of those solutions and how they help uh, the converters ensure that they get excellent mm -hmm. quality in that finished box. Yes, now you have to have these kind of, of device. Um, the faster you run, uh, the more difficult it is to, to do the quality control. And we collaborate with this kind of, of uh, company uh, with their inspection system, quality control system, because they give us the signals sometimes to say, okay, in this bundle, uh, sometimes they, they don't have the ejection system like in the, the corrugated system. So we communicate with them in order to say, okay, there is a box uh, that is marked or in this bundle, there is a, a box that is not uh, folded properly. But yes, uh, for us, um, what we say to our customers, it, it's not a good idea to install a packer, uh, mostly in a fully automated packer when you don't control your process. You have to really have uh, 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 the proper control on your folder gluers, on your quality control system, because if you have a, a output of a shingle of boxes with the uh, uh, box that are not folded properly, you create a bunch of problems in, into the packing machines, and then you create more and more stuff um, in the production that creates other problems. So. Yes, and this is something we have to face. It's a new problem because um, 20 years ago, the operators were all 20 years old of experience. And now we arrive with our packers and we face operators. And this is all over the world. We face operators that are two months, uh, six months, two years. And they have now to be able to manage a full line of automation plus the folder gluer. So before we were arriving with our packer installation one week after the installation of the folder gluer, but now we ask the customer to be in full control of their folder gluers because it doesn't, it doesn't work to bring the packers when you don't fold properly the boxes, you create more and more problems. And then we want, this is what we want to avoid. So it's a new challenge in 2022 to make sure that we arrive with the packer at the right time, because we, are, we arrive with a new solution, but it's another machine to handle. Okay, so automation is nice, but it creates a lot of responsibility for the operators also. And, and uh, Dominic, there are some um, what I would call um, uh, not manual processes, but intervention steps that, that you're, you're also suggesting to run on the back of a folder gluer. For example, uh, an extended delivery line. Um, explain to us why, why a converter would want an extended delivery line coming off the compression area. Well, it's because sometimes... Uh you want to have a fully automated solution. And most of our customers do, and it looks great. But uh, when our customers have large runs in, on the same line, on the same folder gluer line, they can run short runs. And sometimes it doesn't work to set up a fully automated line with everything that in, it's involving. And you want to be able to run a very short uh, uh, production. So sometimes it's better to put the people manually in front of the packer for uh, 20,000 cartons run. So uh, speed is something, but it's good for our customers to have a lot of flexibility. So we try to think, always think that our customers, the, the, we try to avoid having to remove a packer or bypass a packer. So we always try to have the more flexibility on our solution. Yes.
So uh, you mentioned earlier, um, 20th anniversary, uh, obviously it's a big year for you and for your colleagues at Impact. Um, obviously you've come effectively, as you said earlier, from, from your garage where you were developing solutions. Um, give us a little bit of an overview now as to uh, how um, the market is broken up for you, uh, which are your strong territories, uh, tell us are you bigger in carton or corrugated, uh, so, so give us some of the, uh, the little background there. Yes, um, Impact in 2022 is uh, about the 65 employees. Uh, we have sold and installed machine in roughly 30 countries around the world. Main market is US and Europe, about the same, I would say, uh, and a bit in Asia, where we have a small office in Shanghai. Um, it's, uh, yeah, we have a, a terrific growth uh, of 70% uh, last year. So we try to catch up uh, all these new orders. Uh, we will be building a third facility here in, in Montreal to be able to catch up uh, a bit of, uh, of square footage uh, in order <laughs> to be able to, to deliver the machine. And um, we face uh, here also a, uh, a lack of employees, uh, especially for the manufacturing. So we think a little bit in the future to diversify our production uh, facility. Um, here in Canada, we we have to have more employees to work in the shop. Engineering, engineering side is it's not that bad, but here, but uh, in the manufacturing in Canada, here the economy is in a terrific growth, and everybody is looking for employees. So yeah, in the future, this is our challenge, and uh, we are very happy of our success. But we have to face and make sure that uh, we deliver the product at the right time at the right. Play, uh, price in place. And uh, during that um, that 20 years, uh, obviously, uh, you, you said that your previous employer, Cascades, uh, they obviously, you know, were very keen to help you with the development of the, the solution for, for their own folder gluers. But um, tell us a little bit about um, the relationship with some of the OEMs, because obviously I know that I've uh, I've seen your solutions running at uh, at a Bob's open house in Lausanne mm -hmm. in, in Switzerland. Uh, tell us a little bit about the relationship with with the OEMs and how you're positioned today. Yes, for sure. As, as a very small company uh, in the 2000 years when we started, uh, we we were ideas, we were not market, we need people to represent us. And uh, we start in 2005 really to sell in the US uh, with through uh, our first rep who is uh, Richard McDonald from PPCTS. And after that, we work with John Hall from uh, IPAC Solution in UK. And, uh, and there after the economic crisis in 2010, uh, Canadian government who were supporting us a lot in our R&D process. They want us to be more international. So they help us to find an international partner. And we, have the, we had the chance to work for five years with, uh, with Bob's. And this, uh, it opened a lot of doors to impact and give us a lot of credibility. And uh, there we had to face a market of 30 countries uh, from uh, from one day to another. So yeah, it helped us a lot and we keep a very um, good relationship with, with Bob's. But after we had a lot of demand also because many customers, uh, you know, the competition is very strong in the folder viewer industry. And uh, we wanted to be able to supply every customers, whoever they are, Bob's customers or KBA or, uh, uh, Heidelberg or Baumuller, name it, the Ace or Durand. And so we decided that it was time to us to, to fly on our own and be able to, to you know, serve the, the largest uh, number of customers. So um, to, to conclude, uh, obviously looking into uh, your, your 20th anniversary, uh, obviously very exciting times for you, more factory space, more manufacturing space, uh, growing customer base. Um, any new machines that you can talk about? 
Yes, for sure. Uh, uh, innovation is the key, huh? especially for a small company like us. Um, we want we have new challenges in, in Asia because they're packed in a different way. So we are developing a machine to pack small uh, bundles of 50 boxes in the folding carton industry, especially for pharmaceutical. Uh, we had new carton turners coming. Uh, we want also to develop a, a new, new level or a new uh, category of machine, especially for to reduce the cost. So we always focus on the performance of the, our machine, but now we also want to focus on the manufacturing in, uh, improvement of our uh, manufacturing process and try to reduce our cost also. So we might have a new brand and a new level of machines, a lower cost machine for uh, some more specific jobs. We continue to work also on the corrugated side and yeah, uh, we have to think about sustainability. So we have new ideas regarding the future. Uh, yes, for, for new ways to pack the, the cartons in order to maybe have a reusable uh, device, reusable way of packing uh, the box. Great. Well, Dominic, um, wishing you all best wishes for, for the 20th anniversary. Um, obviously, you know, the timing uh, now for converters all around the world uh, with skill shortage, um, trying to get the most out of existing and new machinery. Um, obviously, one way in the converting department is to get more through your gluer. So, mm -hmm. um, Dominic, thank you so much indeed for joining me today and uh, all the best. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you very much.